Okay, so in today's episode, we are talking and we're tearing into some paper, but we're not talking about paper manufacturing, although that would be really fun to to learn about. (laughs) We're talking about mass printing. And I'm here with Jennifer Pettinger, who is the CEO of Sunprint Solutions. She also purchased Sunprint in 2019. Is that right? That's correct. And that has a whole history that we'll dig into. But um, Sunprint actually recently earned uh, an SBA award for women-owned business. And you have actually like grown this business significantly. It's multiplied. Your metrics are looking fantastic. Mm-hmm. They are. <laughs> Over the last <laughs> six year, four, five, five, six years. Yeah, almost six years. Um, and so I just, we have to dig into just you as a leader. I'm so excited to learn how you've transformed this company, but also the history that like led up to it. But first I have to ask, like, how are you doing right now? It's election season. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Uh, How are you feeling? Um, You guys do a lot of election material. We do. Uh, We're excited. We're still in the excited phase that it's finally here and it's back. We love it. Uh, At the end of the day, we really do like it. We appreciate all the work that comes our way. And our employees appreciate all the extra overtime and all of that. So we're still in the excited phase. Uh, it's going to get really crazy. We <laughs> like, call it the hurricane. What's the next phase? <laughs> <laughs> the next phase is you're just, um, we're in the robot. Just keep going, keep moving. Um, survival phase. And so, yeah, by by Halloween time, we're zombies. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> okay, you have to share, because I didn't know this before today, mm-hmm. but... Just the cost, right? Of so, what's like? What does one order look like for you? Like, let's talk about an election order specifically because yeah. it's so rel- perfect timing mm-hmm. for this. It is. So, for one order, we do a lot for. Well, this time of year, we do some for the presidential side as well. So, we will ship to swing states. So, for us, that would be Arizona and Nevada. So, those are pretty big orders. They can be anywhere from you know seven hundred thousand to you know million and a half pieces per, per run, but we do a lot for Congress, for congressional races, for Senate races, even for propositions, things like that. So it really just depends on how big their scope is their how wide of a net they need to throw. So, yeah, I mean, we're talking, you know, hundred thousand pieces on average per, I guess you'd call it like political piece. Right. But they'll right. do that multiple times. They'll send out many pieces, uh, for those in Utah, you don't have any idea what the rest of the country goes through in their mailboxes. It is wild how much mail they get. Utahns get a lot, but when I see how much other states get, especially a swing state, a swing state, their mailboxes are just, just cramped, bursting, <laughs> bursting with political uh, mail. It's Count ourselves lucky. Thing. I love it. It's great. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, great for sun print. It's great for all the printers that get to do that. Yes. And then I loved learning that, like, because we think about how much, like, maybe a batch of 350,000 pieces, print pieces would cost. Mm -hmm. But then you said you had an invoice for $1.4 million in in postage. postage. Yeah. Yep. (laughs) This week. This week. We're doing a project that's just shy of 6 million postcards. And yeah, that postage invoice is about a million and a half dollars. So yeah, that all goes to the post office, but you know. Yeah, I was just thinking the next time you go Mm -hmm. and you open your mailbox and you take everything out of it, (laughs) think of Jen. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, you know. Don't throw it away immediately. Just, just, you know, at least appreciate it. Look at it. (laughs) You know, mail is so great. And it it actually grew during COVID. Uh, It was a way to cut through digital clutter, right? Like it's so easy to filter your email box. But with mail, you got to touch it, you got to look at it, and you got to make a decision. What are you going to do with this mail piece? And you can trust it. Like people spent a significant amount of money to put that in your hands between the manufacturing, the design process, the manufacturing, the printing of the piece, and then the postage. So there is an investment behind that mail piece. So you can trust it a lot more than you can an email that you're going to click on this bad link that's going to take you down this rabbit hole of taking everything away from you. So you can trust it. Okay. So let's talk about if, if what your, what Sunprint Solutions does is Mm -hmm. this, this is a manufacturing podcast. We're Mm -hmm. talking about Utah manufacturing in all its forms. And I've, I was kind of poking around because I'm like, I wonder if there's people who like, no, that that's not manufacturing. Like they're not making something from scratch. Like they're not taking raw materials and like there's ink, there's paper, there's, Mm -hmm. we're putting them together. And but like I, I realize it can be viewed as a service. It can be viewed as technology. To what's your take on that? 
we are all of those things. We are definitely manufacturing. We are taking your idea that you designed an illustrator or in design, and we're making it so you can touch it, feel it, smell it. We are manufacturing that. So we're taking paper and making something out of that. If it's a book, if it's a mailer, and then we do folding cart and packaging as well. So when you're thinking about products like cosmetics or, you know, supplements, anything that goes into a folding carton box that you'd see on a shelf, we manufacture those as well. And then we send those to the co-packers where then they fill your product into the boxes. So yeah, I definitely consider ourselves manufacturing and we are very heavy in technology. Our technology comes from, um, you know, a lot of pre-press, you know, we got to take your files and make sure that what you envisioned on that screen is going to come out the other end exactly how you want it. But then with all the variable printing that we do, so very personalized printing, we can put your name on there and a special photo that will resonate with you. And maybe your neighbor has a different photo, uh, you know, of a car or whatever. That takes a lot of programming, a lot of technology. We have a very big data center. I have programmers, all those things. And the security of that, we got to protect everyone's data. And so we have, you know, all that comes with that to protect data. And because we do a lot for healthcare as well, we're sending out, a, you know, your medical plan information and things like that. So we, Sunprint has a very broad scope of what we cover between just folding carton packaging all the way to variable printing and mailing. And it requires a lot. Yeah. I was, I was just going to say, because we see all the time, like the co-packing side, we mm -hmm. see mixing the things together and putting it in the bottle, but like they already have the packaging, like it's ready mm -hmm. to go. It's already, you've already yep. done your, your <laughs> job and put it in their hands. Um, and so it actually brings me back to a number of times that I've taken a tour of a certain facility and I'm just, and like, I didn't even think about that. I'm like, oh, the box magically appeared. Here it is. It's right. ready to go. Yeah. And it came from somewhere that went through its own complicated, like complex process to get yes. to where it is. So I love that we're bringing this piece in. And when I think about, you know, a, 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 and this isn't a Kinko, this is a massive, massive. warehouse, <laughs> massive facility. Mm -hmm. um, when I think about just, yeah, what you're accomplishing in that and the complex processes involved I'm like, it's absolutely manufacturing thinking about process, right? Like it all comes down to, cause there's plenty of, I think every company has process for sure. Mm -hmm. Um, but there's just a certain level of logistics that come with what your job does and what I've seen other manufacturers do that is so in, in line. It's the same, same things. We like to say it's a lot more than ink on paper. <laughs> what we do requires even a lot of science, a lot of chemistry. Um, when we're talking about, you know, brands, you know, not only if you want to talk about like say Coca-Cola, they have a very specific red. Pepsi has a very specific blue. You have to match those colors. You can't just run the gamut and they want consistency when it's on the shelf. They all need to look consistent and the same. Um, that takes a lot of effort more than someone. Um, Interesting. They yeah. wouldn't think about in the, in like the sent you world. the color code and you're yeah. off. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you want to think about color. I mean, that's a whole nother topic. Like let's talk about Vivint, right? Vivint here in Utah, they have a very recognizable orange. You're not going to get that orange from your four basic CMYK, right? You're like desktop printer. You're never going to get that orange. That's to be formulated. That's to be specially made. And then we use our, our presses. You know, we put the ink in that press to get that color. There's a lot of companies like that that have a specific color, so branding is important. And then what your, your packaging, when you think about like say Apple, right? When you go buy a new Apple phone or an Apple product, that's the first thing you notice is their packaging. It's soft. It has a soft touch. It's got some rounded corners and things like that. And you think about, am I going to throw away this really nice box? I'm going to hang on to it because it's worth something, right? There's a whole strategy around There's a whole that. strategy around packaging. Your pack your packaging will speak a lot to your brand. And if you're demanding a really good, you know, price point, your packaging is going to make or break if someone's going to feel like, yeah, what I'm buying is worth it. So what comes along with that is embossing, foil stamping, um, you know, the soft touch coatings. And you guys do all of that. And we do all of that in-house. And what comes with those challenges 
is making sure it all sticks. And it kind of, it blows our mind even to this day, how many times we still run across issues of like spot UV not sticking to a soft touch coating because you have like that contrast between matte and gloss and then even getting certain foils to stick. It is a process. We've been around for over 85 years and we still run into challenges because formulations constantly change. You know, the technology changes in ink and and paper, you know, how they're manufacturing paper and all of that plays a part on how ink will stick to paper. And so it's not as predictable as we think. (laughs) So challenging. It it blows my mind how challenging it is still. And we celebrate those wins because, you know, we really want people to be proud of their packaging and their product or their book or their mailer, you know, that whatever it is they get, they're going to stop and think about that for a minute and be like, Hmm, that's really cool. Do I want to dive into this deeper or do I want to buy that product? So yeah, it's, there's a huge process behind it. You know, we have a hundred thousand square feet and a lot of really big equipment. <laughs> yeah. I was just saying, I've got to go, I got to get in there and see that equipment. It's very capital heavy. Um, you know, a lot of investment that goes into it. Um, you know, presses are millions of dollars and die cutters are millions of dollars. So yeah, it's, it's a huge investment to just make those types of products. And I have a deep appreciation for those cutters because in our office we bought, we have one of those big ones you just like, (laughs) like, so it's cool that I can do it myself. I'm like, be great if I wasn't. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Um, So you alluded to, or you didn't allude to, you said you've been around for 85 years, Mm -hmm. but there's a whole story behind that. Walk us through, Mm because the history is really cool. How it started, what it started as and what that looked like. And then in coming into your family and then you owning it. So Sun, it was called Sun Lithographing. They started in 1941 and the gentleman who started it, his name was Ed Hall. And I don't know Ed and he has since passed on, um, but he's the one that started Sun and it was all in lithographing printing. Tell us what that is. And so that's like, um, yeah, like that's the hard one for me. (laughs) (laughs) I wasn't bored of that. No, it's like the really big, the really big printing presses where you're talking, you have, you have water, you have oil, you have ink, you have a metal plate and you have these things called blankets I and gotcha. it all makes an image and it puts it on paper. So if you've seen Catch Me If You Can, is that the one with Leonardo yeah. DiCaprio? Uh-huh. When he goes to like Germany, he's over there and he's running a printing press and printing checks. That's basically what it is. Oh, there you go. Is. Oh, there yeah. you go. Okay. <laughs> Thank you for the visual. Yeah, that's basically what anyway. it is. <laughs> yeah. So we have a couple of those, um, much newer. <laughs> but so yeah, that's how Sun started. And then he passed it on to his sons. And then his son, his sons were more um, absent owners, and so the team that they had in place eventually bought the company from the sons. And so there was a couple of you know a group of employees that purchased it, and then that eventually came down to one individual. And then in 2019, that is when Sarah and I had the opportunity to buy it from him. So we're, we like to say we're the fourth generation employees to buy son. And then to back up a little bit, even before that, where I come from, because I was not part of, you know, the Ed Hall family or anything. My parents started progressive direct mail advertising in 1976. And then they grew that company. It was just direct mail only. So that's where all the printers would print the products, bring it to our company, and then we'd prepare it for the post office. So we would address the pieces if it was inserting into envelopes and all the mailing part. That's what we did. And we specialized, you know, getting those postage discounts, pre-sorting the mail and submitting it to the post office with, you know, all the documentation and paperwork that they require. So that was my background was the mailing. And in 2014, that's when my parents decided that they would like to retire. And that's when we merged with Sun. So Sun acquired us and we were right next door. We shared a parking lot, you know, um, our parking lot. That is so convenient. It was very (laughs) convenient and it was just a really good fit. And it was something where I knew that the future of progressive in order to grow, we needed to get into printing. Uh, We couldn't just be that trade of, um, you know, the mailing side. We did a little bit of printing. Like if it was, um, letters, like we had to match the envelopes. Like we did, you know, some very small scale printing, which was great. And that's really where I got my feet wet in the printing side. So then when I came into sun in 2014, uh, that's really where I learned 
the most about printing. And I was one of their top salespeople for those five years. And we had always, Progressive had always done political mail as well. You know, growing up, I remember being, you know, those seasons when my parents were gone a lot or like I would go into the shop and help them. So I, I've always been very well versed in the political mail season. And so that was no no strange thing to me. So I just kept that going. And so it was five years later that Sarah and I had the opportunity to then buy it. And so it was like buying my parents' company back with so much more. So tell us some more about Sarah, because I know yes. that you guys complement each other beautifully <laughs> and that's so important. Oh man, Sarah is the brains behind this whole thing. <laughs> she started at Sun in 2010 and she started in the accounts in the accounting department and she worked her way up to be the CFO. And she just has an, an incredible knack for the numbers and, you know, reading financials and all that kind of stuff. And she really kept Sun really it truly going for so many years. And she knew the books inside and out better than anyone. And for me, when I came along, you were in a very male dominated industry. And so when there's another female, you do tend to gravitate towards each other. And we became instant friends at that time around, you know, just before the merge. So it was, you know, maybe 2012, 13, but then in 14. And, you know, we we went through a lot of struggles. Um, well, I did mainly just when you go from a very, you know, a family owned business into a big company like that, there's a lot of change that goes into that. And it was hard. And, you know, I just really leaned on her and we, you know, everyone at a company, everyone thinks they can do it better, right? Like we all have our ideas on how to make, you know, the company you work for, how can it be better? So we always talk about it. Well, so when that opportunity came up that the owner wanted to retire as well and move on to his next adventures, we were ready. Like we are like, yeah, we already know all the things we want to do and how we would really kill it at this. And where she's all money and just is a genius at all of that, and then I'm on the other side of like sales and some operations. And, you know, I made, I'd, I've learned a lot about folding cart and packaging, but my, you know, background was the variable and the print and the mail. Uh, that's just where we complement each other. And so it was, it was a good team. What do you think some of your, like one of your biggest learning curves was like going from, well, what you knew to then this, this is different, right? Mm -hmm. Like this is, <laughs> this is more, more responsibility, more things probably you haven't had to deal with. Oh man, we bought the company. We signed like May 31st, 2019. We had no idea what was coming for us in that <laughs> a pandemic. Oh yeah. Wow. Talk about, you know, we had, we just didn't know. We didn't know if we were going to make it. Had no idea. We knew that we had a presidential election coming later that year in 2020. And we just had to get through those spring and summer months. And we did it without laying off a single person. We knew we needed everybody to get through that season because, you know, that fourth quarter with, you know, all the healthcare work that comes out, you know, open enrollment, things like that. And then the political season, we knew if we could get that far that we were going to be great, right? Like, you know, we could put away a lot of all those profits to carry us on and help us invest and grow. And so that's what we did. We just got, you know, lean and uh, we were very fortunate actually that shortly after you know, the pandemic hit, you needed COVID test kit boxes. <laughs> and we were like, Hey, <laughs> we do that. We'll take it. <laughs> we'll take it. So, wow. We got lucky that we had to do a lot of packaging, even though a lot of mail dropped off. Like if we were doing a lot of dentists or gyms, a lot of things that people, you know, we're no longer walking into somewhere. So they cut back a lot on mailing. Um, our other side carried us. I was going to say, card. in crises, mm -hmm. usually there's a lot of communication that has to go around in some <laughs> yeah. form. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, while we saw a dip on one side, we saw, um, you know, an increase on the other. Hmm. And I think the biggest thing we learned was just how great it was that we were diverse. We are not just in one sector. You know, we, if we have a slow period for folding cart and packaging, a lot of times it's because the other side is, you know, um, is that's the peak season. And so we're able to balance that out. And those departments even complement each other as well, because with mailing and that, like, you know, sometimes you get really creative on your mail pieces. You need to die cut that and make it a shape instead of just square cuts. Right. So it all, it all works very well and cohesive. 
And so, yeah, for us, it was just making sure that the employees wanted to stay. They want to be with us through that journey and making it a good place for them to be. How do you do that? How do you make, what do you focus on to make it a good place to be? Uh, culture. Um, culture is a really big deal. That was something that from the very beginning, we knew we wanted to change and we wanted to have just a lot more respect for each other to know that you know, we're all adults, we're all professionals and let's respect each other and our knowledge and mistakes happen. And it's how do you handle those mistakes and what do you do and learn from them? And that was a, that was a really big thing. And we wanted to even have more fun, you know, let's have more barbecues. Let's have, uh, just a lot more fun in where we're spending our time. So with our political seasons and our healthcare season, you know, like with this coming up, we do a lot of extra things to make sure that while we're there, we're having a good time. And so it's, you know, when we're working weekends, we're having themed days of, you know, let's wear your favorite band t-shirt. And if you do, if you participate, you know, you can spend a wheel of prizes. Cool. Right. And so we're passing out lots of prizes. We provide lunches and food and treats and, you know, we just try to make it a yeah. good time. And so that was our biggest thing is if we're all going to be there for a long time, long working hours, let's make it the best we can. <laughs> yeah. No day needs to be a drug. Like yeah. we can, we can change the, we can make mm -hmm. it, you make it what you make it, you know? Yep. It's all about our attitude. So, okay. I was going to ask you just looking at the ends of the spectrum. Cause I realized like not every, we're talking about make every day great. Not mm -hmm. every day is great. Right. No. And like, it's a slog sometimes it's, mm -hmm. it's, what are just kind of the difficulties and of, of this job and the, the biggest pain points for yeah. you and okay. maybe for your team as well. Mm -hmm. But then what are some of like the bright spots in your day? Like that feel really fulfilling and satisfying. Yeah, I would say our challenges would be if a client just doesn't like the product we've produced. If you go through all these challenges, like I was saying, um, getting foil to stick when you're foil stamping something, if that's not sticking right or, you know, so they reject, maybe they want to reject your boxes. Maybe they didn't glue all the way, something like that. And making sure our quality control is where it needs to be. Those are big challenges sometimes when you're trying to just produce things really fast, maybe something gets slipped through the cracks and trying to keep up with it, with technology. And we just outgrew our information system, you know, our program, our brain, it houses everything, our scheduling, our, our estimating, our ordering, all of that. So we just switched over and man, you don't think about how much breaks when you do that. I mean, we know stuff's going to break. You just don't know what it is. And so a lot of challenges with just, keeping all of that cohesive and working together. And, you know, those are, those are tough and training people on new software and making sure that things are getting done when we promise. So I would then, our wins are just when customers are happy, when the employees are happy, when they want to be there, when they walk around and, um, we have, so Sarah and then our COO, Stefan McTee, he's amazing. He's been at Sun for over 35, 34 years, I think. Oh, that's he, amazing. He's like, he completes our triangle. And he, they just have, they have this great thing where they walk through the shop and he, like on Fridays, he's like, Friday, it's Friday, yay. And she's like, no, Mondays. We want Mondays because we love being here, you know? Mm -hmm. And it's just a fun dynamic because then the employees, you know, they're like, we're all interactive together. Like, I don't know, like walking through, we get excited and it's the camaraderie, things like that. And so... I'd say our wins is just when people say they're happy to be there. Yeah. Yeah. I love how often that's the answer. <laughs> like literally, it's truly though, mm -hmm. it's like heartwarming, honestly. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't matter what sector of manufacturing you're in. It's yeah. like you can be in aerospace, you can be making, you know, airbags, whatever. It's it's like, it's all about people. Yep. It just comes down to the people. We wouldn't work if we didn't have to. I don't right? Think. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so let's make it night. Let's make yes. it fun for each other. Yeah. Yeah. And connection, human connection, right? Like mm -hmm. that's life. Like what would it be without, without just connecting to each other, making each other better? Yes. Um, so a lot of people might not probably don't know this, but Utah is pretty competitive. I, and maybe mm -hmm. not competitive. You correct me on that, but there are a lot of businesses like yours, mm -hmm. mass print shops that do packaging, do, yes. do similar things. I think it seems like you've kind of controlled the political space a little more than maybe some others. Like that's your thing. Well, the, the political space is because we are a union printer. And so when we can get into that, the, 
uh, yeah. that a little yes, bit we will. as well. But yes, Utah is so unique. We have a lot of printers in Utah. And it's fascinating to me as we've learned more about other areas like Denver and these other places. I'm like, you guys don't have a printer like around every corner. Mm -hmm. What? (laughs) Um, Utah's so unique. We have amazing printing companies here, just incredible people. And we, we try to be really good, you know, friendly competitors, help each other out when, you know, you need a part or whatever, like we want to support printing in general. I'm just a big champion. I was just going to say, you don't feel like you, do you, feel like you have to be competitive with them or it's yeah. not. It's like, there's like a camaraderie between you. Everyone. It's both. We're definitely competing. I mean, Utah, the entrepreneurial part of Utah, that's just the way we are. Right. And mm-hmm. there's so many new businesses popping up all over Utah. Is so awesome. And so, yeah, we are all competing a lot of times for the same work, but at the same time, um, we're happy when there's enough to go around. Like for me, that's all I'm happy about. When we start seeing the consolidation of printing, to me, that's not good. I want enough printing that everyone is full and happy. We'll just take care of the whole country. Yes, here. <laughs> absolutely. We're great. We're a great spot. So yeah, but we there's so much different kinds of printing as well that sometimes you don't step on each other's toes quite as much. Um, for sun, we focus on paper, all the different kinds of paper products. So I don't get into... Um, like stick packs or, you know, the plastic pouches oh, yeah, and I know all that. all about that. That's a totally different area of printing. And, you know, that's one where we're like, I don't know if we'd be very good at that. I don't know if we should get into that, right? Mm-hmm. So, so yeah, we easily, when we get asked for things that we don't do, it's like, hey, but I know A, B, and C do that really well. You should definitely contact them. And not everyone does mailing. Mailing's really hard. And if you mess it up, it's a lot of money. And so not everyone does that either. So we all kind of have our niches and then we do have those areas where we do compete. And, but yeah, Utah is so unique and so fascinating with the hard work that we have and the knowledge and talent that Utah has. It's incredible. I know I've used, and I didn't know Sunprint existed Mm -hmm. until, um, I was introduced to you guys, but Mm -hmm. I was like, I've used five other printers, you know, that for Mm -hmm. various, four stick packs for right. Mm -hmm. A range of products. So super Super cool. And they're beautiful facilities. I'm sure yours is too. Um, So you mentioned we just have to transition right into the union stuff because this is Mm -hmm. something um, I think a lot of, unless you're in a union, don't understand it. And I almost feel like, and correct correct me on this too, but I feel like unions sometimes have like a negative connotation with them. (laughs) Tell me about that. Tell me the reality for you and what you see and why it's helpful to your company. So Ed Hall, when he started Sun, he was the one that started it as a union shop. He That was his passion, from what I've heard. And so we've been union all along. What that means is, is the employees have a collective bargaining agreement with the owners. So it's not my union. It's not Sarah's union. It's my employee's union. And what I've learned over the course of, you know, more than a decade, watching how they interact, right? So my parents' company was not union. And then when we came over to Sun, we had the the employees had the opportunity to join the union. That was scary because you're right. They can have a negative connotation. When you see the UAW, they're on strike and, you know, all these different things. Yes, they have a negative connotation. Our union has never gone on strike. <laughs> I've, they've, that's just never happened. Um, what it has provided our employees is really great benefits. And what that gives the company is really great employees. And they stick around a really long time. It gives us a competitive edge on probably other printers on how our pay structure is and how our benefits are. So when you have, for example, one of the biggest perks I feel the union has negotiated over time is they get overtime daily rather than after 40 hours. So watching my parents' company if they had to work really hard during the week and we were you know, coming in early and they were pulling in a lot of overtime, if there was no more work by Friday, he could send the workers home and then they would lose that on overtime because if they didn't, you know, they have to work 40 hours first and then get time and a half. Uh, there was a lot of employees who incurred extra costs to come in on those early days. Maybe the buses weren't working that early and they needed to take a taxi 
or Uber. They didn't have Uber back then, but you know what I mean? <laughs> if they did. Uh, if they did. They so would've. it's extra costs. Or maybe they had to get extra child care, things like right. that. It, uh, for employees, it does cost them extra money to work for you more hours. So with the union and with Sun, they get paid daily overtime. If you work over eight hours in that day, you get the overtime for that day. And I personally feel like that is a really great thing. That is that fair. That is great. That is very fair. And so that's what they get. And then obviously we contribute to their 401k and their health care and all those kinds of things. And then we negotiate COLA raises. So we just went through a, a collective bargaining um, you know, agreement contract and we negotiated you know, that they'll get 5% raises for the next few years. That's a really big deal. And that was a really and big number. just to number. know it's happening. They yeah. know it's happening. They know it's coming. And that was a big deal for Sarah and I. That's a lot of money. It's a lot of money. I mean, yeah. of course, they come to the table with a lot more. I mean, you, you want to start high and meet in the middle. And so I'd say that probably that's the hardest part. And for any owner where all of a sudden now you have to negotiate with your employees on a regular basis, that's probably the hardest part for an owner that they don't want to do that. And that's why they don't want to unionize. But for us, we love our union. We support our union and we encourage people to be part of it. It's also because of what it brings to Sun. Obviously, it brings us a lot of work because for those companies who want union workers and we can print a union bug on the piece that shows that that was manufactured by a union company, you know, we we benefit from that. And at the same time, I mean, I have an employee, he's at 51 years that he's been with us since high school and he's a pressman and he's incredible. You keep your employees. And you trust your life with that guy. <laughs> he is, he is, he's so great. He knows you know? everything. Like, yeah. He's, they're so loyal. And so for me, it's like, if you're going to give me your time, if you're going to give me your talents, like you should be compensated for that, you know? And that's why I feel strongly that I support our union and it's a great thing. Yeah. And you think, I mean, really how, how valuable is life? That's where mm -hmm. it gets t tricky. Like you're paying yeah. people for their time, mm -hmm. but like really the time you have is invaluable, right? It is. But to do as much as you can, I think is just amazing. Yeah. And it, it makes me think too, because I've talked to lots of companies and workforce is always such a, a th it, it's a big thing in Utah. It's like, mm -hmm. we just can't get people to fill the spots. And then when we do, they don't stay for longer than this amount of time. Yeah. Um, and I'm sure most of them aren't, don't have a union. Mm -hmm. I guess, would you give advice to someone mm -hmm. like, how do you, what if you're like, actually, I think that would help our workforce if we did that. Mm -hmm. Do you know how you kind of start implementing something like that? Well, usually it's not the owners. <laughs> right. It do just, that. Okay. It's the employees yeah. They, they bring because, it to you. Yeah. I mean, they're looking for, you know, how their environment is and that's what they want to have a say over. It's, I think it's so different for all the other sectors where like for an automobile, people aren't going out and buying a car because it was built by union workers. So that's different. And maybe you're not going to Starbucks or you're not buying from Amazon because they have a union workforce. Maybe some people are, but not the majority. But for printers and for us and for our sector, you know, we get a big book of business because they're specifically looking for that piece of business of their bug. And so it benefits our industry, our, you know, the industry that I'm in. So I don't know if I would say, yeah, for a different industry. Yeah, that would totally work for you because I can't say that it would bring them more business for us. Um, even if for whatever reason that that went away, that we did not benefit financially by bringing in all that work. I can't say I would say no to our union that I would want it to dissolve or anything because I still like that the employees have a say. And as an owner, yeah, that's hard. That is hard. And so, um, you know, I, I think you just have to know your own business and what it could benefit for yourself, because at the end of the day, it is about the workers. That's the only reason we're doing this is we have to have a job and we need to make money. And it's about being fair. So is there anything like, I guess, what is the stress if you can share just like the mm -hmm. stress of having a union more mm -hmm. on on you? Right. You're saying you know, like financially, there's mm -hmm. uh, a kind of a stress that comes with that. How do you balance that out? And it's not, it seems like you have an amazing attitude and like that, like your perspective on it is, mm -hmm. is great, which makes a lot of difference. But financially, when you're looking, okay, well, we know we have this cost. Mm -hmm. How do you balance that with everything else or plan for that? Yeah, that, that is, it was a huge stress, especially when they came to us initially, 
um, on our last contract negotiation and they asked for the sky um, as they should, right? Go for it. And when we look at the numbers and we're like, okay, we won't even keep our doors open. Like it's impossible. Well, our union is smart enough to know, well, we need you guys to be in business so that we can have a job. (laughs) So they're level headed enough to Uh, say, okay, what can we afford? What can we make sure that we can continue to invest to make ourselves relevant, to go into the future, but how can we still take a piece of this pie? So the stress is definitely also sometimes when the shop steward comes and is like, Hey, that person is working on a union project and that part of the union. It's like, Okay, but did all the other workers who are union, did they refuse that over time? They get first right of refusal. I still get to produce the work. So sometimes there is that back and forth of the rules, you know, like what is in the contract, things like that. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's those, those, those conversations can be sometimes stressful. Um, the workers, you know, they get to have a union representative if there is any disciplinary things. Like they can have that union rep to be by their side and to kind of help fight for them. But I mean, I can't think of an instance where that was even a bad thing for us as well. It's like if you're doing something not, you know, according to the company policies and things like that, you're just, you know, what are you going to do? For sure. But, you know, back when COVID happened, having the union turned out to be a really great thing in disguise because at first we panicked, right? And what kind of changes should we hurry and be making in order to stay open? And it forced us to slow down because we had to go by our contract. And then we had to come to the table and say, okay, if we wanted to change shifts, is this okay? Is this going to, you know, how are we going to work that out? And ultimately we end up not making any changes, but we could have made some really drastic changes that could have been bad, but it forced us to slow down. Yeah. And so at the end of the day, we don't have a lot of stressors. If anything, it's maybe some conversations or some, you know, negotiations. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, our workers, they're, they want us, to stay in operation and it stays in business. So we work together. Awesome. We have, yeah, we haven't had the chance to talk about unions yet. So I'm really grateful to get Mm -hmm. your perspective on it. Um, so to close this conversation Mm -hmm. out, I just want to know as, uh, the CEO owner of this company, what are you most proud of that you guys have done so far? I guess, I mean, it can be since you've kind of been in this industry or since purchasing this company. Mm -hmm. Um, I think Sarah and I are probably most proud of our growth. We're proud of the investments that we have made to keep us moving forward. Uh, We do feel like if you're not growing, you're probably dying. And so I I think we're really proud of those decisions that we've made. We're proud of our culture and what we continue to, um, you know, foster and make sure that people want to be there. And so I I think we're really proud of that. And yeah, I think we're just proud of that we've made it. I mean, yeah, we're five years in. We It's a small industry. We did hear some rumors recently that, oh, man, when we heard you guys bought the company, we gave it six months and the doors would be closed. We're like, awesome. That's great. We because- love the fuel <laughs> that that gives us. You know, like that would have been maybe a little heartbreaking at first to hear that kind of sure. stuff. But now going five years in and we're growing, we're like... That That's would just awesome. take me off. <laughs> that would just fuel me. Yeah. yeah. So I think you guys have crushed it. Yeah. We're proud to be a hundred percent woman owned and with a team of more than a hundred people. Yeah. That we've grown awesome. and we're investing. We're proud that companies come to us and ask to, you know, join our forces. Like when they don't have an exit strategy and, you know, they come to us because they want their people to be part of our culture. They hear about that. Wow. We get really proud of that. What a compliment. And so, yeah, we're happy when they come to us looking for some solutions and how can we help them, you know, in their business to, you know, move on, you know, for them to move on, but still take care of their employees. That means a lot that they choose us. Jennifer, thank you so much for sharing. Yeah. This has been eye opening to get, I feel like a missing piece that in manufacturing that we haven't been able to touch on, but so cool and thank super, you. super proud of everything you guys are doing. Thanks. We love it. We, we have a good time. Thank you.